welcome you to worship on this Mother's Day Sunday, on this Ascension Sunday. We call your attention to the announcements, and we'll begin with an announcement from Bobby. Peace be 
will, of the prayer of confession. It's printed in your bulletin. As God's people together, let us confess our sins. Lord Jesus Christ, though we proclaim you Lord of all, we fail to serve you in a multitude of ways. We are not generous with our time and talents. We do not pay special attention to those discarded by our society as worthless. We come before you confessing our sins. Hear our prayers. Forgive our sins. Guide us to the path you want us to walk. All these saints we have in your name. Brothers and sisters, I declare to you the truth. In Christ, your sins are forgiven. So turn to your neighbors and pass the peace of Christ. Young people, come on down for our children's message. Jesus rose from the dead and 
We have two young girls who, excuse me, young women, who in order to let the mothers focus on the sermon and the scripture today, we're going to take you downstairs if you want to go. But we will all have pictures for you of Jesus rising up into the heavens. And we're going to sing a song. Are you pretty sad? Okay. I personally don't think Liam is that scary. <laughs> Here's our song, it goes like this. Inch by inch, row by row, gonna make this garden grow. All it takes is a rake and a hoe, a piece of fertile ground. Inch by inch, row by row, God will bless the seeds I sow. God will warm them from below till the rain comes tumbling down. Congregation, if you could help us, you have the words. Here we go. Inch by inch, row by row, gonna make this garden grow. All it takes is a rake and a hoe and a piece of fertile ground. Inch by inch, row by row, God will bless these seeds I sow. God will warm them from below till the rain comes tumbling down. Take them to your seat if you want to stay up here. Or girls, are you ready to take anyone down who wants to come down? Perfect. We'll start over here. Or we'll start over there. I'll start here. There you go. 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 Yeah. Can we go back to state and even 
a four by four, the boys four by four hundred, I don't think anybody was thinking about them going and they took so much time off their best of the season to make it state. And same with the girls four by one hundred meter relay, both of those. Everybody ran exceptionally well, but those two were some really pleasant surprises. Yes, 10 events to stay. And that's pray for good weather, no precipitation. <laughs> that's never fun. We lift up the weather. It's all I'll say. <laughs> Other joyous concerns today, Bobby? I have a joy. I'm just very thankful for mothers who assist in decorating the church. Others say, well, and the standards are Without them, it wouldn't be possible. Bobby, I'm going to include you in that joy. For, yeah, we'll laugh. <laughs> the intentional barrenness of Lent the wonderful Easter decorations and then changing to the graduates last week and now changing to Mother's Day and now changing to Pentecost. These ladies have put lots and lots of time in here um, decorating our sanctuary to help us with the season of worship. Thank you. Others today? Today, the Hoffman's 40th anniversary today, Shelby, her sixth anniversary. We lift you all up. Others today, um, do we have an introduction of a new child that's been born into our church? Does Luke want to do it or do you want to do it, Bailey? We rejoice with Bailey and Leanna here in church, in person, asleep. Don't wake her. <laughs> Others today to be lifted up. My, yes. Um, I might mention that on May 20th, Bob and Kathleen Brown will be celebrating the 75th anniversary. 75th anniversary for Bob and Kathleen Brown on the 20th. I'd like to lift up my own mother, Marilyn, in a one-car accident hitting a pole in a parking lot in the, but she's been increasing aches and pains after her little accident this week. And I am traveling up to see her today, so if you remember Marilyn Maxa in prayer. Also my brother Brad, the good news is he's completing, or has completed his um, cancer treatments. Been going through chemotherapy for about six months. The bad news is in the last week of it, he developed blood clots in his leg. So he's on Coumadin. He lives out in Seattle and is, he and his wife Becky are serving as surrogate father and mother for our Hannah today on Mother's Day. So if I can lift up both Brad and Becky, Max said in special prayer. Jane? Well, I have a prayers for Bob and Judy, my brother. Uh, they're going to leave Tuesday to come up. So we're so thankful that they're going to be able to make the trip. He's doing very well. And here's the bonus. If you pray for Bob Brown, you're praying for both of them. So two prayers for the price of one. Yeah. Bob and Judy Brown, you lift them up. Any others? Yes. Ron is here with us again today. Karen Saltzman. Ron and Karen. As Karen adjusts to Vintage Park. Others today? Yeah, Chelsea? Um, Morgan had her baby last Friday. 
Morgan Miller with Baby, Arlo Alexander, all going well, and with session approval, which will happen, Morgan has asked as a member of our church to have Arlo baptized in our church on the 26th, so you'll get to meet Arlo soon. Thank you for reminding me of that. When I saw Arlo, and now it's gone to my mind. Any others? Let us continue to remember the people of Gaza, the people of Israel, Ukraine, Russia, and Sudan. I was blessed to be able to worship with the First Arabic Presbyterian Church last Sunday. I feel for some of the people who speak other languages a an hour and 15 minute service and I came halfway through, um, all in Arabic. My Arabic just isn't that good. So, but they were so welcoming and had me stand up and pray for them at least twice. So let us join in prayer. Lord God, we do thank you for your goodness and grace. And our prayers today are for those who are in mourning. For those who are mourning the death of a mother. For mothers who are mourning the death of a child. Oh Lord God, may your special compassion be upon them this day. We thank you for those who maybe biologically aren't mothers, but have been mothers to many in their lives. We thank you for them today, for all women. We thank you for our athletes who, by perseverance, did so well and now carry their talents to the state track meet. May the weather be as you intend, Lord. We pray for Heather and Sandra and Bobby as they decorate our church weekly to help us worship in the spirit of God. We thank you for Leanna. We thank you for Arlo. We thank you for all children. We thank you for anniversaries, including the Hoffmans, including Shelby and husband, including Bob and Kathleen. We pray for Ron and Karen, for Bob and Judy Brown, for Brad and Becky Maxa, for Marilyn Maxa, for Morgan, for all mothers. Lord, hear our prayers. And as you are with the people in Sudan and Gaza, in Israel, in the Ukraine and Russia, we offer this prayer to you, praying the prayer that our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Remain seated for our song of meditation. 288, happy the home when God is there. 288.
children. The very next week, May 28th through 30th, the Tuesday through Thursday, Vacation Bible School will be held in Lenox. It's an ecumenical, meaning multi-church, Vacation Bible School, this year hosted by the St. Patrick's Catholic Church. Starts at 8 in the morning, runs till noon. Both breakfast and lunch will be served. So bring your kids. Leave them through two meals. Let them experience ecumenical vacation Bible school. We have some registration forms here at the church. Let us receive our morning tithes and offerings. Well, he was going. 
coming, they were, and they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come, into, come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day journey away. When they had entered the city, they went to the room upstairs where they were staying. And Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas, son of James. All these were constantly devoting themselves to prayer together with certain women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. It's enshrined in the Presbyterian Book of Worship. The pastor of the day should always preach a sermon appropriate to the occasion, which means that you preach a different sermon on Christmas than you do on Easter, a different sermon on Fourth of July than you do on All Saints Day. But what I wondered this week is, how do you preach a sermon appropriate to the occasion when in Sharpsburg they were honoring graduating seniors. It's Mother's Day and the day in which the church celebrates Jesus' ascension into heaven. Is there such a scripture that could cover all three occasions? Well, on Tuesdays, I often go to Malloy to a Bible study for those preparing to preach on Sunday. And our text to talk about was the one that Christy read for us this morning, Acts chapter 1, 1 through 14. I had explained ahead of time to the other preachers there that I was struggling to find the right scripture. Halfway through, one of them piped up, Tim, this passage is Jesus' commencement address to his disciples. Just like the students were getting ready to graduate from school and head off into the real world, so Jesus was ready to ascend into heaven. He was giving his final instructions, his commencement, a new beginning for his disciples. It should fit in perfectly. Before I even had much of a chance to respond, someone else said, and look how the passage ends with the mention of Jesus' mother. And in between the two, Jesus ascends into heaven. There you have it, said the fourth person. A scripture appropriate for Mother's Day, Ascension Day, and Graduation Day. But what is it that this passage is trying to get us to do, even if we don't fit any of those categories. Here's the first thing we need to notice. During the 40 days between his resurrection and his ascension, Jesus taught the disciples what they needed to know. And did you catch what his subject was? The kingdom of God. Jesus' first sermon was two sentences long, according to the Bible. The time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe the good news. From the beginning to the end, Jesus taught his disciples about the kingdom of God. And they still didn't get it. Did you hear what they asked him in the middle of his teaching them? Lord, is this the time that you will bring the kingdom about in Israel? Is this the kind that you will make Israel great again? To which Jesus said, the times and places and things that God will do are not your concern. You are to be my witnesses throughout the earth. 
What are we to bear witness? First of all, that the kingdom of God is at hand. It's not an earthly kingdom. It's a kingdom where love reigns, where forgiveness is practiced, where hope is real. The kingdom of God is where there's forgiveness and grace and mercy. Peter, finally in the 10th chapter of Acts, says this, which I think is important to us today. I now realize how true it is that God does not so show favoritism to any nation or people, but accepts people from every nation who fear the Lord and do what is right. He was talking about Cornelius, who was a soldier in the Roman army, who was a Gentile, but whose prayers ascended up to God. And God sent Peter to teach him about Jesus Christ. God's kingdom comes about when we bear witness to the love and hope and salvation that is available to all in Jesus Christ. Two, God has a special gift for us. At Sharpsburg today, the graduating seniors got Bibles and M&Ms and T-shirts. But that's not what Jesus promises his disciples as he is prepared to go into heaven and leave them to carry on. No, the gift that he promises is the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of God which can dwell in us and change us as we need to be changed so we can become more like Jesus. Filled with the Holy Spirit, we can bear much fruit. We can help lead others to Christ. We can do the work that Christ has given us to do. Listen to what Jesus said. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you will be my witnesses to the ends of the earth. Power. Isn't that what everyone wants? I told the graduating seniors down in Sharpsburg that just before I graduated from college, I received an invitation, a request, an order from the president of the college to come and visit him. Mind you, I had been on the chaplain search committee of which he was a part, and I'd gotten to know the president pretty well. I was baffled as to why he would summon me to his office. Of course, when I got there, he was too busy to see me, but he sent one of the assistants to talk to me. And this is what he said. Tim, if you want to have power and influence in the world, you might want to rethink your decision to go to seminary and into the ministry. You were way better off when you were pre-law and getting ready to become a lawyer. Now, lawyers, they have power and influence. Pastors, not so much. I listened politely, asked the assistant to please give my regards to the president, but that no, I was pretty sure I had all the power and influence I needed. I had the Holy Spirit, which God had promised. We don't need the power that the world offers, the influence that the world offers. We need what God freely gives us, the Holy Spirit. It's all we need to do the work that we're called to do as witnesses. Witness is all we're really called to do. Three, yes, Jesus will return. No. We will not know when he's going to return. Yes, the kingdom of God will come to earth. But no, we should not confuse earthly kingdoms with the kingdom of God. We must never confuse worldly agendas with God's agenda for the world. Jesus plainly states that it's not for us to know the times and dates that God has set for whatever is going to happen. 
God has a plan. And our job is to be witnesses and let God's plan unfold according to God's will. That doesn't mean we have nothing to do. We're called to work for the kingdom of God to give sight to the blind, food to the hungry, clothing to the naked. We're called to reach out to orphans and widows in their distress. We're called to visit the lonely. We're called to gather together as the church of Jesus Christ to praise God and bear witness to God's love. And we're called to do it together, men and women. Hey, you know what a big change was for the church when Jesus ascended into heaven? Men and women started meeting together to pray. You'll find if you read the Bible that Jesus' disciples usually gathered together just a group of men. That's when they prayed. That's when they made decisions. Even after Jesus rose with just the men who gathered together in an upper room. But after Jesus ascended, Luke is very clear to tell us that when the eleven gathered in the upper room to pray and worship God, the women were now with them, including Mary, the mother of Jesus. Ah, mothers. Can you imagine what the church would be like without mothers? I asked the students graduating down at Sharpsburg who were in attendance to think about all the women who have influenced them in their lives. Biologically connected women, women to whom they have no relation. I watched all of them nodding as they thought about those who had nurtured them, who had corrected them, who had encouraged them. All of us raised in the church have many mothers. I can't count the number of mothers that I have had through the years. And in fact, when I went back to Kentucky on the mission trip last year, a woman stood up during joys and concerns and said, Tim was the second pastor I had to raise. I thought to myself, right. I can't count the number of mothers I had when I first became a pastor, but every one of them crucial to my faith development. Mothers, women, thank you for all you have done in the church. Way more than you probably realize. To drive home that point, I want to close with one of my favorite stories about an angry teenager and a church lady. It was told to me and Sandy and many others at Presbyterian Senate School by the Reverend Roger Nishioka. The woman's name was Janet. And she was a bowler and a woman widow. The teenager's name Travis, always angry, always depressed, being raised by a single mother who insisted on his going to church with her, which he hated. Janet and Travis met during Pass the Peace. He didn't want to pass the peace, but here was this woman standing in front of him, shaking his hand. As soon as church is over, he tried to flee. But guess who was waiting for him at the door? There was Janet. Travis, it was so good to have you. Can't wait to see you again next week. And so it happened that every Sunday she haunted him. <laughs> Sought him out during past the peace. He tried to leave early from church, hide in the car. She'd come and knock on the door one no. Travis, Travis, so good to have you here today. Oh, it's a privilege to have young men coming to church. She drove Travis plumb crazy. He complained to his mom, and she's like, there's nothing I can do about that, son. That's just Janet. And so it continued until one Sunday, Janet was not there. During past the peace, nobody greeted Travis. And as they left, there was no one waiting for him. And Travis said, Mom, Janet's never not here. Ask the pastor about it. And so 
so she did. And he said, oh, I forgot to mention during the church service, Janet had a heart attack this week. And she's in the hospital. As they left, Travis said to his mom, Mom, on the way home, can we stop by the hospital? And she said, son, the hospital's in the opposite direction. It's not on our way home. And he said, Mom, I said, can we stop at the hospital on the way home? And so she drove out of the way and drove to the hospital, got the information, went up to Janet's room. They knocked politely on the door, and Travis was the first one through the door. Janet looked up and said, my Travis, I didn't expect to see you here today. I'm surprised you came to see me. At which time he just ran and hugged her neck. And with tears coming out of his eyes, he said to her, Lady, you have been saving my life. Don't ever underestimate the power of the Holy Spirit to work through common gestures of love. Shown from women to angry teenagers, from teens to lonely widows, from one person to another, that's when the kingdom of God comes in all its fullness. We're called to be witnesses. Let's get to work. Let's pray. Lord God, empower us with your Holy Spirit that we might bear witness to your love, to your mercy, to your grace, to your saving power, to your resurrection, to your ascension into heaven, where you sit at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. You will come again to judge the living and the dead. We praise you, Lord Jesus Christ, and ask you to come and be with us this Mother's Day, this Ascension Day, this Graduation Remembrance Day. Come and be with us. Through Christ we pray. Amen. Our closing hymn is hymn number 211. Jesus shall reign. Stand as we sing together. 211.
As the bell rings, go in peace to love and to serve the Lord, and to be Christ's witnesses to the end of the earth. Amen.